Hello, my name is Michelle and I'm from Eastside Partnership. Today we are on James Ellis Bridge on the Conswater Community Greenway and alongside the public in East Belfast we were delighted to name this bridge after James four years ago. This month it would have been James's 90th birthday and alongside his family and friends we have put together this short video of special memories and stories. We hope you enjoy listening to the special acknowledgement of James Ellis, a true East Belfast son. Hi, I'm Toto, Jimmy's youngest son. I'd like to pay tribute to my fond memories growing up of becoming involved in some of his many artistic side projects outside of his more famous work. As a teenager, we sat in my bedroom and recorded the epic poem East by Paul Yates about East Belfast, using a flute, a keyboard, a microphone and some very lo-fi audio equipment to commit the whole thing onto cassettes. A little later in life, we travelled to Sligo to stage a play about WB Yeats, including working out every element of staging, including the lighting rig, the sound design and so forth. And finally, after Dad's passing, I directed the play Two Angry Men about Sam Thompson and Jimmy Ellis's battle to stage the play Over the Bridge. Although Dad sadly wasn't there for this project, some of his favourite acting friends got involved, including Michael Smiley, Adrian Dunbar and Conleth Hill. I'd like to pay tribute also to the fact that for Dad, the journey was as important often as the destination. We would often get to Belfast by travelling by car from London to Scotland, staying the night in Port Patrick and then getting the ferry over in the morning. Dad was a fine actor, director, poet, an unbelievably wonderful dad and a great best friend. On behalf of the city of Belfast, we are proud to remember actor, director and writer James Ellis on his 90th birthday. A son of East Belfast, as well as the son of a shipyard worker. We remember his trailblazing legacy and the mark that he left on our city, especially in the arts. We continue to recognise his deep connection with Belfast through the James Ellis Bridge, which opened four years ago, along with the Conswater Community Greenway, close to the place that Ellis's family called home. Hi, I'm Amanda, I'm Jimmy's daughter. And I'm Josh, I'm Jimmy's grandson. A few months before Dad died, he treated us to a trip to Belfast. Uh, and uh, it was the first time I'd been back since I was 16 for my granny's funeral, and it was the first time you'd been at all, wasn't it, Josh? Yeah, no, it was, the, it was the first time I'd ever I'd ever been, and it was so lovely to see the kind of real East Belfast, which he was so proud of. Um, and he was he was very keen to show us around Sydney mm. and his childhood home, and it was so lovely for me to see that and to kind of understand his roots, basically. Yes, and I'm just so struck by how proud he'd be of having a bridge now going to the docks at the end of his road, uh, recognising his talents. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of all that he achieved as his daughter. And I guess you are also. Absolutely. I think he'd be so humbled to see how much his, his beloved East Belfast is, is remembering him for his 90th birthday and, and, how, and how much it would have meant to him. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. I'm Alan McKee. I'm an actor and a writer and I uh, live in East Belfast now. I have done for 20 something years. I haven't been brought up in Coleraine. Whenever I was growing up, one of the very few Northern Irish voices that I used to see regularly on national TV belonged to one James Ellis. He was a man that was one of the, the those few voices and as a, a young man wanting to become an actor when I grew up, he was a, a beacon that my voice could go on to the television, could go on to national TV. It hasn't been on there as often as I'd like, but I met Jimmy then in the early 90s uh, in a short film where we actually played father and son. Uh, he played the father. And then we worked together in radio and television a number of times after that. It was always good to see Jimmy. And he always had a, a great love for this area, for East Belfast, where he grew up, and the Oval Football Ground, which is just over there. So every day when I'm down walking the dog on my way to Victoria Park and across this bridge and I see the James Ellis Bridge, it gives me a wee smile and I think about a great man, a great actor and a good friend. And what would have been his 90th birthday, happy birthday Jimmy. Hello Jimmy Nesbitt here. Jimmy Ellis 
was, uh, I'm delighted to say, a great friend of mine. He was one of my first heroes alongside Jordy Best. Um, I was lucky enough to work with Jimmy a few times, most memorably for me, on a film called Resurrection Man. Uh, we would film in Manchester, and uh, each Friday night, uh, Jimmy and I would get the train back down to London. In those days, there was a, a dining carriage with a tablecloth and service, and um, Jimmy introduced me to to wine, I'm delighted to say, uh, to a love of uh, food, but mostly uh, a love of storytelling. He also taught me how to listen, you had to with Jimmy. Uh, he would often start stories on a Friday night, which wouldn't finish until a couple of Friday nights later. One which memory ended with the punchline, at least it's not the band of the Waldorf Astoria. Uh, Jimmy, if he's listening wherever he is, will be laughing at that. Jimmy was all things to all men. Uh, a kind, decent, humble man. A uh, most wonderful actor, a beautiful writer, a, a phenomenal talent. Um, uh, but most of all, he was uh, a great friend. Jimmy really was a beacon for me. He shone a torch for me, he still does. Um, so thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy Ellis was a kind man. He was great fun, he was inspirational, and he wore his intelligence and carried his intelligence very lightly. Um, he was a quiet intellectual with a lot to say about the world. My name is Breege Brennan, and I am very happy to be part of this celebration of the life of James Ellis, who would have been 90 on this day. I first met Jimmy when I did my first television play for the BBC, a play for today called Too Late to Talk to Billy. He was already very well known in Belfast, um, and as a child I remember seeing him on the renowned series Z Cars, in which he used his own Belfast accent, which is a very rare thing on television in those days. So it gave you the feeling that, that you could do that. You could be yourself in a television part, and uh, it was very inspiring. So when I met him first, I, I was a little in awe of him, I'd have to say. It was my first play, but I needn't have worried, because here was an enormously generous, open-hearted man who was very interested in young people coming along, and uh, particularly the two younger sisters in the Billy plays, uh, played by two fantastic young Belfast actresses who were still at school. He really nurtured them and he had great fun with them and he was so generous. And it really did feel like a family because Jimmy um, did not hold back in his kindness and his sense of fun. And he made life so much easier um, than it might otherwise have been. Uh, we were all filming in that tiny little space. It was a small, it represented a small house off the Donegal Road. And he was such a big man, Jimmy, he really filled that space. And with his great, easy laugh, he really, he could have taken over it all, but he, he gave you so much time, he gave you so much space, um, that it was a great learning experience for a young actor. Um, years later, I had, uh, arranged to meet up with Jimmy in his flat in London to talk about doing a rehearsed reading, reading at the National Theatre. And it was then that Jimmy showed me his poetry, both his poetry in English and in French. And he'd worn that so lightly, that side of himself, you would not have known that here was a, a secret poet. Um, uh, I was really quite amazed and it was just to me proof of what a remarkable man he was. He had such a wide range of interests and uh, uh, quite an intellect, and but all the time he was kind and funny and uh, a wonderful actor. He sadly missed. When I first saw it with Jimmy, I was 23, and he wasn't my idea of an actor at all. I thought he'd be very grand because he'd done so much. He was very kind to me. I worked on the Billy Place with him, and then I spent three months with him in Sligo. He was tremendous fun, but he was also a really dainty taster as an actor. We were just very lucky to have him. I don't know what he'd make of this bridge. I suspect he'd be maybe embarrassed by it, but I think he'd be absolutely delighted. And it's fantastic having it here because it's, uh, I suppose it's emblematic of crossing over, which is what he did many times. He crossed the Irish Sea many times and he crossed over in his work. Um, I miss him terribly. I miss him terribly. He was a great, great actor. Hello, I'm Charlotte. Hi, I'm Katie. And Jimmy was our granddad. 
growing up we weren't really aware of granddad as an actor no the one thing we do remember was when he was on this is your life um because we were allowed to stay up late for it and we actually filmed a similar video message yeah except we were four and six and the blooper reel was a shambles yeah. um also i went to drama school a couple of years ago and i met people there who were from belfast and did know his career and were really inspired by him as an actor which was so cool and it's amazing to know that his legacy is still relevant in Belfast today. Mm -hmm.